pajagi seam is a seam where the stitches are visible on the outside and they're normally done in a contrasting thread. This seam comes from patchwork that was used in ancient Korea to make pojagi or wrapping cloths. And they had this distinct form of patchwork for when they were making wrapping cloths from a number of different fabrics. Now this is traditionally done in the Korean way with silk fabric and silk thread and sometimes ramy or hemp but it can also be adapted for Western available materials. And today I'm gonna to show you how to adapt an English paper piecing pattern to this technique. So it's like a fusion stitching technique. Now I don't have my own um, English paper piecing designs, so I'm using this great quilt design and it's available from Fiona Sandwich. So you can check the link below to get your own copy of this great pattern. Projagi patchwork is template based, so instead of doing the English paper piecing where we baste it onto the paper, we're gonna be taking the paper and turning that into templates. So I've just used an old cereal box and I've made my templates from that to match the pieces in English paper piecing pattern. So be sure to mark all your templates well so that you will know how they go together because it's pretty easy to get them mixed up. I'm using this pattern to make a temperature quilt for the year 2020. So each of the spokes in the star is gonna have two colors to represent the high and the low temperatures of the day. So I have my two template pieces for high and low, and they are clearly marked for which one they are, if they go in or out. And I know this one is gonna be the low temperature. So I am using solid fabric for mine, but you can use whatever kind of quilting cotton you would like to use. I am lining this up, and I wanna have this edge parallel to the grain of fabric for this design. You will have to adapt this for your own design. Lay the template onto the back side of the fabric. And I just happen to have these pieces cut into rough triangles for mine, but you can do this even before you cut out the fabric. Just be sure that you leave a quarter inch around all sides. Hold the template securely and use a hair marker. This might be a little different if you've only done um, traditional quilt, Western quilting, but once you start using this, you might find a lot of other uses for it. So we're gonna go around the edge of the template, pressing firmly and using a back and forth motion. Being sure to hold the template in place. And you can see the fabric is creased along all the edges. So now I'm gonna finger press just to help it stay in place even more. And pay special attention to the points because we wanna clearly be able to see the point. Now you can see I'm doing this on a cheap placemat from the dollar store because if I did this right directly on my table, it would leave marks in my tabletop. So you might want to have something underneath where you're working for this part. Now I'm going to mark the next piece. Finger press. So now the pieces are ready to be joined and this is how they're going to be joined together. These are the, where the seam will be stitched. So to join them, we will press the seam allowance to the inside, press this seam allowance to the inside, and I'm going to get a pin, put the pin right in the corner of the piece, and then the pin right in the corner of this piece. And 
I get to go along and find the other corner? And it should lay smoothly, and then I will add another pin to the middle. I'm using black thread to stitch this so that it will be clearly visible. And we're not stitching in the seam allowance. So we're gonna start stitching right up in that corner. And the knot of the thread will be buried inside the seam allowance. So we can see both seam allowances are folded to the inside when we stitch. And then I'm gonna take an overcast stitch through both pieces. And I'm gonna continue along. And you want your overcast stitches to come through the fabric perpendicular, come straight through so that your stitches will be on an angle. The one thing to be careful of is not to pull your stitches too tightly because we're gonna to want to open this and have it lay flat. And if you pull your stitches too tightly, then it, it won't be able to open flat. It'll have a little, little ridges in your seams. So it might seem at first like you're stitching it really loosely. So when you get to the edge, just take another little stitch right in the corner. And then before you finish off the thread, just double check to make sure that it will lay flat. So that does lay flat. So that's gonna be good to go. If it doesn't lay flat, now is the time you can go back and adjust your tension, either loosen it or pull it a little bit tighter because you also don't want any holes in it. You want these two pieces to be just laying just side by side. So then we'll take one last stitch to get our needle to the inside. And then we'll take a knot in the seam allowance. From the thread. So there we have it. There's the English paper piecing, but done with a Pujagi seam. So if you find that using the Hera and doing these crease marks, is difficult or you want it to be a little bit more portable, you could base these onto the paper in whatever method you use with glue basting or stitching, the same as you would for English paper piecing, and then do this stitch with your paper piece. You will just do them wrong sides together with your stitches on the outside. It's a similar kind of stitch, so it won't be too difficult to adapt that. The one thing you have to watch out for is with bias edges. They easily stretch, although with cotton, it's not as much as it is with silk, but they do easily stretch. So be careful when you're folding them and creasing them that you're just creasing, you're not pulling them as you crease. Don't run your thumbnail down to crease on a bias edge because that could distort the piece and then you'll have a hard time getting them to line up. So this is my uh, temperature piece for today. Here's a piece for a previous week that you can see. Each star has seven points. So each star represents a week of high and low temperatures. And I think this is a great pattern. So go check that out from Fiona Sandwich. And if you wanna try other English paper piecing, other English paper piecing patterns, 
with this technique, I think it'd be a fun option and something really different to do. So if you want to more information about this or for more uh, tutorials, patterns and ideas, check out ebitastudio.com.